welcome to Miami in what feels like the start of something pretty special, this new T100 world tour. Do you both feel like it's something new and special and how are you feeling ahead of the first race? Emma, I'll start with you. Yeah, so I said, especially after last year, I was like, I'm never racing in humidity again, actually after two years ago. Um, so to pull me back here, I think it has to be for something very special and um, I'm glad I'm here. I don't want to be like sitting at home. I would have had massive FOMO. So yeah, happy to be here. Um, yeah, I'm really, ex I'm super excited to be here. I think the feel is like, it's almost like world triathlon, like ITU back in the day, there's some hype around it, there's cameras, um, media is like a growing thing in the sport and it seems like everyone has someone to film them and take photos and so yeah, there's a lot of hype and I think it's easy to kind of get carried away and nervous with that but um, ultimately it's, I think Emma's, Emma's done this race before, I've done this race before, it's the same, the same race but it feels like a bigger deal. But it's got a massive end goal prize of a T100 world champion that'd be special if you one yeah definitely i think to be the first champion like um yeah this is literally i don't know yeah we've never had top 20 in the world like frequently competing so um i think it is going to mean a lot yeah it's it's kind of like the i watched world cup mountain biking and the best mountain bikers in the world line up several times a year and go head to head and in triathlon we haven't really had that opportunity aside from world champs and maybe a few other times a year, but to be seeing our best competition six or seven times this year is a huge privilege, I think. And yeah, whoever can last the whole season, it's a kind of a, a war of attrition almost. <laughs> it's easy to peak for one race, but to perform well six or seven times is really a whole other challenge that most of us have never tried to do. So, is that something that you've got to factor heavily into training now, which you have never had to think about before. Yeah, I think it's um, it's quite good for me because like I, I race a lot. Um, I find it hard to say no. Um, <laughs> so I'm racing all the time. So I'm actually trying to cut back on my races. And yeah. for me to do eight races would be like, yeah, a little bit less. So, um, <laughs> but they're bigger, they're bigger. So, um, and I think like Paula was saying, like it's so exciting because all the races are so different. Um, so I think the days will be really different as well. With that in mind though, this one, especially with the, the kind of circuit that is, this, that's here at the homestead, it feels a bit different as well because it's this bowl, you can't hide, you've got laps. Do you feel like that as well as this is an intense first stop on the calendar? I think it's intense in terms of the conditions. Mm -hmm. um, it's humid, it's hot, it's early in the year. Um, and I, I've raced on a racetrack four times now, so my fifth, and I've had pretty good races every time, but if you are struggling, it is challenging because you're seeing the same thing again and again and again every five minutes, and especially the run actually is very p repetitive and the loops feel really long when you're on foot after riding around the track on a bicycle. So it can be a really hard day, but at the same time, it's exciting because you see the crowd way more than you would in a race where you're just going out into the country for two hours and coming back so i think there's definitely upsides to it it's much more spectator friendly and from a athlete perspective it um adds adds some excitement as well you alluded to it i don't need to ask you about conditions really and what happened to you before, <laughs> but maybe you could tell everybody <laughs> Um, yeah, so unlike Paula, I don't have a good track record. Um, yeah, I passed out in humidity and um, it is going to be humid. Um, I keep telling myself we're racing in the evening, we're racing at night, it could be cooler. Um, and yeah, it's a challenge, hey? Like, I'd rather have my hardest race start in the season, like build up a bit of resilience and um, yeah, start it off that way. But, Emma, you're in great form. You just did this fabulous 10K PB. Is that sitting in the back of your mind that actually people are probably now looking at you going, Emma's raced a lot. She's been out in South Africa in humid conditions. She's ready. Yeah, maybe. I think uh, for me, I'm always like, oh, if I'm running really well, does that mean I'm swimming really bad? Um, so yeah, I still have to put together a triathlon and um, 
yeah, I looked at that sim today, that sim course, and I was like, wow, this looks pretty long. Um, but um, yeah, no, I think it's going to be a fun challenge. And I'll be honest, I have no idea what, what swim bike form I'm in. So That's the challenge, isn't it, as well, for the beginning of the season. Nobody knows how anyone else's fitness levels are. Paula, secretly, confidence-wise, in terms of a scale of five being super fit, one not, where are you on this? <laughs> I feel like I'm like a bear coming out of hibernation from winter a little bit, but I've been training well. Um, my biggest challenge is consistency over historically over my career. So 2023 was really consistent for me and I had a healthy off season of running. I wasn't racing or doing any road races or TTs or anything like Emma was, but I think that for me, I tend to build through the season a little bit and I've tried not to panic train for this race and feel like all my eggs are in this one basket. I'm trying to be smart so that I can stay healthy and I'm as fit as I could have been um, given that this is kind of early in the season, but we'll see. <laughs> and you've been a real consistent figure as well on the PTO for a number of years now, um, probably more so than Emma has. With that in mind, do you think you've learned a lot? And if so, what are you bringing into this season? that you think will stand you in good stead? Um, I think actually my ITU background, which Emma has some ITU background as well, might play to our advantage because the season is so similar. It's like a lot of travel, a lot of high level races, a lot of eyeballs watching us and people that started in long course and just kind of focused on Kona every year, 70.3 worlds didn't have that kind of series experience. So yes, the PTO races have been awesome to build experience in this distance, but I think it goes back to like five or ten years ago even with the kind of racing that I used to do and that Emma used to do that might be helpful, yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on that, Emma? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it is a, I, I like going back to a place that I've raced at before. Um, yeah, not happy memories here, but like just the familiarity of the course and um, what to expect. I think you can always take something away. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's good to do as many of these kind of races as possible as well, looking further into other seasons. I think it's, um, yeah, it just always helps a little bit. Yeah, because I think a lot of them will have multiple years of racing, right? Like we'll go back to Ibiza and we'll go back to London, hopefully. Maybe I'll catch Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so you get used to the courses that you're competing and obviously you're going to Singapore again in a couple of weeks time. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how the season progresses from there. Talking about the race though on Saturday, there are three big names that aren't featuring. Obviously you've got Taylor Nib, you've got Annie Howe, and you've got Ash Gentle. With those three not being here, does that change how you're both viewing the race and how you think it might play out? Paula, I'll start with you. Um, I think it changes the dynamics a little bit, just Taylor Nib on the bike and uh, Ashley on the run. and uh, I, it, but I try not to think about that when I'm prepping for a race and who's here and what's going on. It's, I really need to just get the most out of myself. And yes, there's dynamics that come into play, but ultimately it's, I can only control who, what I, that I show up and no, no control over who else does. So that's what I'm trying to focus on. I get very overwhelmed and stressed and nervous if I think about who's here and who's not here and who's fit and who's not fit. And, um, that's a lot for me to think about, so I just try to <laughs> sort of pigeonhole my focus into myself. Stay in your own lane. But again, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to look at those three. Um, obviously, you know, world rank number one, last year the queen of the PTO, and then obviously Taylor won in, on home soil in Milwaukee as well last year. They obviously do change something. Again, do you look at that and go, well, actually, those three have won recently. Maybe there's a, a top spot on the podium. Grabs. Yeah, I think you can look at it in so many different ways. I think you could say, oh, but then the wild cards that have come in are very swim bike heavy. So is that going to make the front of the race faster and work against the back? And um, like Paula said, I think if you start like reading into like someone tagged me in where they'd like try to predict how the race was going to pan out. And um, I was like, wow, you know way more than me. Like, <laughs> I'm going in there and, um, yeah, just praying that it's not just my bike left in transition when I get out. Um, <laughs> and even if it is, like, then it's a hard day. Like, you're going to have to bike your best, you run your best. And um, I've realised from these races, like, in Ibiza, I was nowhere. And, um, yeah, 
just kind of got to the end in fourth. So I think anything can happen. And I think as well in these really big races, people can get hyped up and overbike or overrun. And um, yeah, you've really got to focus on yourself. Otherwise, if you think about people, then I think you kind of get into that trap. We've put you two together because obviously we've pitted you together. You've probably seen that graphic as well circulating <laughs> on social media. Do you look at each other and go, yeah, you know, strong competition here. We might be there or thereabouts together at points in the race. Yeah, I think we both have different strengths. Um, if I see Emma at all, she's probably going to beat me because she's a better runner. Um, so my strategy has to be to like swim well and bike really hard. But Emma's strong across all three. So I don't know. I'm <laughs> you know she's going to charge. If, if to I love seeing Paula. Like, <laughs> if yeah, I ever exactly. see Paula in a race, I'm like, oh, I think I'm having a good one. Oh, thank you. Um, but yeah, the Paula, that's not true. I'm not a faster runner. We looked back in the archives of an uh, old photo of us and she beat me by four seconds at World Cross Country. So yeah, As don't juniors. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> As juniors. In well, 2008. That's a, a funny. It's a rematch then. If you guys are too near it, together it's a bit of a rematch. On the run. Yeah. I'm going to get my Scotland. Chuck in Arthur's seat and a bit of mud and yeah, it's a rematch. It's Scotland? Yeah. What country was that? Uh, 2008 World Junior Cross Country. Wow. Yeah. So we have a rivalry dating back. We're loving this. We're going to start getting this out of the archives. <laughs> it was one of my mum's friends, but it's definitely copyright. <laughs> uh, it's got Getty all over it. Did you know each other then? Were you aware of each other back in the running days? No, because you weren't doing triathlon yet, right? Mm -mm, yeah. You were just a runner. Oh, were you doing triathlon whilst running? I was, yeah. Sure. I Impressive. Then. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It was different. I was like doing triathlon in the summer and running okay. in the winter, and it was a little different. Old friends. Amazing. Amazing. Old friends. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. In Miami. Also, something else you have in common. You're both podcasters now. You've been a podcaster for, for quite some time, Paula, and Emma's just started with her, with her new one, Bread, Breadwinners. Yeah, that was not my name. <laughs> <laughs> Have you given her any tips? Have you listened to Emma's podcast? Yes, actually last week I was having a really rough, I was really tired last week and kind of nervous about this trip and I, my coach like cancelled my tempo run, said to just go for an easy run and I put in your podcast and it was, it felt like I was just listening to them have coffee. It made the run fly by, I felt better after and I thought that was really good. Oh, thanks. It was very conversational <laughs> which is actually how we try to keep our podcast with that triathlon life and um, so yeah, we, I, I thought it was great. You guys, you guys did a good job, especially being overseas from each other. Sometimes it's hard to like time the audio and time the Yeah, the with the delay. We always have to just count two seconds after Amelia says something because the Australia was amazing yeah. <laughs> is the one. But um, oh, that's good feedback. Better than my dogs. They like sit and listen and then just fall asleep. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> what have you learned, I guess, ever from doing that? Do you feel like you're now actually getting a greater or a greater insight into the triathlon world and like is that something you can take advantage to as well the fact that you're there with the others talking in depth about it yeah i think it's really interesting like for me um like i never want sport to be selfish and and i really enjoy following other people's stories and listening to their journeys and do a bit of coaching so um yeah i really find it interesting how everyone is and um it's actually like it's brought us together a lot more. It's like, like Imo had an injury, unfortunately, coming out here. And me and Amelia, she's a little bit down on the last one. Um, and yeah, we're trying to make a look at all the positives. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's a tough journey. And you know, actually, you're rivals, but you're also all in it together. And, and you want to elevate the sport together and push each other to the best because, um, yeah, you, you want well for each other. And, and that also elevates your performance. Do you think that's something pretty unique <clears throat> about triathlon? You've both done athletics, time trials in terms of cycling as well. Do you get that in other sports or do you think this is quite unique to triathlon that you put so much out there on the course yet you're great friends off it? It's hard to say. I don't know what other sports are like. Um, I get the vibe that in like mountain biking and the girls that race again and again are actually pretty good friends and respect each other a lot. And I think having a tour like this actually helps as well because we do see each other now several times a year. Um, we all have social media outlets, like I listen to Emma's podcast, so it just feels a little bit like we know each other more and know 
more about their lives and their personal lives and what's going on besides just on the race course. So I don't know, I think that's really nice and it, this sport goes then far beyond us. When we retire, we can still have good friends from when we raced. So but yeah, we're competitors on the race course, but everyone's pretty awesome off the race course. And Emma, I guess you've got a, a kind of maybe a mini competition within the competition, the fact that there's so many women from the UK this time, is that something that you look at and go, I want to be a top dog in the UK in this race. Yeah, or I just have a bad race and say I'm the number one South African. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I definitely think like, um, yeah, there are a lot of British girls, hey, and um, I don't see, so I think a lot of them see a lot of each other. Um, and I feel a little bit like out of that where I train. Um, but um, I found that it was that funny kind of dynamic with Collins Cup where you're really against each other like to get into the team and then when you're in that team like you're a team you're working together so I think that was another kind of yeah really fun uh, dynamic that we haven't had in triathlon um, and I guess yeah Great Britain must be pretty proud to have that many girls so yeah it's kind of cool for the nation. Do you think there are any great rivalries within the women's kind of tour at the moment? Do you look at anyone and go I know that person really wants to beat that person or, or vice versa. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Kat wants to beat me. Yeah, I feel like Kat wants to beat everyone. <laughs> she put up a post, thou shall not pass, with me behind her. And Joe's like, we're going to stick that up on our garage. And you're, and, and like, um, I think that just like, some people really thrive on that. Like, I don't know, they need to be pumped up. Whereas, I don't know about you, but I'm the opposite. Like, I'm, if I'm chilled and happy, like, I feel like I float, like, for me, a happy athlete is a fast athlete, and if I feel like angry or like I don't like this person, then yeah, I, I don't perform very well. So my tactic is, yeah, just try not to have that big rivalry with anyone. <laughs> just be nice. <laughs> Stay clear of drama. Yeah, sounds good. But Paul is the opposite. Paul is the uber nice one that will <laughs> stop if someone, and I better not pass out because I know Paula would be the first one on the track. Oh, if she's yeah, in the lead, she'd be like, are you okay? <laughs> You're not that nice. To she, a is. Ever, she is. If it goes wrong again, but Emma, are you jumping off the bike or stopping the run? <laughs> I don't know. I I do think there's really good medical here, and like it's a track, so everyone's close. So I think she'd be okay. I, I don't know if I'd stop, but I mean, ask Paula what she did in Oceanside with the wetsuit. Oceanside. Oh, I helped. <laughs> did I help Cat with her string? Yeah, she helped his own. Yeah, I think I need a little bit more. Um, ferociousness I guess when I race I've just been doing this so long that maybe I've lost a little bit of like the killer instinct but I'm like Emma when I race well it's when I'm happy and when I'm um, feeling a little less stressed so that comes from being nice to people and being nice on the race course as well so <laughs> you just picture Finn being like yeah <laughs> happy thoughts Exactly, yeah. Well, maybe go and hang out with Kat or hang out in her garage because you've got a picture up there as well. So <laughs> that brings some ferocity to your next race. Both yeah. of you, good luck on Saturday. Uh, I hope the start of this season is great for both of you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you.